Okay. So uh, basically what I'm going to do is I have a, um, a client program here already kind of done, and we're just going to sort of uh, uncomment thing, uh, lines of code in the client program as we implement them. So going down the list here, I see the next thing we have is we have a size function. That should be pretty straightforward. So let's just do that real quick. Uh, that will get us to there. Um, and so over here in the header file, I will uncomment that. And then so um, excuse me for a second. All right, so over here in the implementation file then, um, I need a uh, give me a sec here. Sorry, I'm learning Zoom as we're going, I guess. Um, I don't want it using my whole screen. Oh, there we go. Okay. Um, so let's write our size function. Um, the return type is going to be uh, the size type from the simple list class. Um, all right, so how are we going to figure out what the size of the list is? Any suggestions? Just keep a counter uh, uh, data member and update it every time you add a new one. Okay, so that would be one approach. We could add a new private data member called uh, num items or something like that, and then uh, we would just that would require us to um, change our insert function so that we added one to that. Um, and then uh, any other function that, that we write that changes the number of items in the simple list uh, would need to be um, modified to include uh, an update of that uh, data member. And honestly, that's, that's probably the, the right way to do things. But uh, just for fun, I think what we're going to do is we're, we're not going to have an additional data member. Um, we're just going to have our size function actually count how many items there are in the simple list. You can just traverse the linked list, right? Until right. Until the pointer is null. Right, exactly. So um, let me get a um, count variable that starts at zero. And then we're going to just need a pointer that points at each node uh, that starts pointing off at the first node in our linked list. And then we're going to have a loop that moves that pointer down to the next item in the linked list um, and increments count, right? And then we'll just keep doing that until we reach the end of the list. Um, Okay, so there's uh, incrementing the count, and then we need to move the temp pointer 
to the next node in the list. So that just means temp pointer gets temp, oops, temp pointer. Okay. And then when we're done, we're just going to return count. All right. So let me know, does that make sense? Do we need to look at a picture to kind of be able to visualize that? No, it makes sense to me. Okay. Makes sense. All right. Um, so let's uh, test this out, see if it works. Um, So, um, simple and simple. No member name size. What did I forget? Oh, it's not saved. Let's try that again. Uh, okay, so no, wait. Yeah, okay, no errors. And uh, if we want to test it out, uh, let's put a few numbers in the list. And quit. And it's going to say there are six items. So I think we're good. All right, next thing we're going to add is we're going to add a, um, a find function. What the find function is going to do is it's going to um, find the number in the simple list and it's going to return that number. Um, that's going to, that might seem a little strange because if, it might seem kind of useless to just return the number that we're looking for. Um, so you might have to imagine that uh, maybe our, our, the items in our list are something a little more complex than integers. Maybe they're, uh, you know, it could be an employee record or a student record or something. And we're looking for um, an ID number. We find the ID number, we return the whole record. Um, but just to keep things simple for this example, we're not going to do that. We're just going to return the data itself. Um, so if we're looking for uh, the number three, we're just going to return the three that we found in the, in the, um, in the linked list. Um, so to test that, I'm going to uncomment this part of the code. Okay. Uh, so you can see here, what we're going to do is we're going to have a second parameter that is going to be set to false if the number that we're looking for is not in the list. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. So going to our header file. Um, let's uncomment the find function. Okay. All right, so the return type of the find function is going to be value type. And let's see, the first parameter was the um, value that we're looking for. And the second argument was the found parameter.
Okay. Any questions so far? Okay, so uh, what we need to do here is we're going to um, have a, a temporary pointer very similar to how we did with the size function. We're going to point it at the first item in the list, and then we're going to uh, keep moving that item down the list um, until either we find what we're looking for or we reach the end of the list. So let's set up a pointer, I'm going to call it current pointer this time, point it at the first node in the list, and then a while loop. Uh, actually, let's do this while, uh, while curve pointer arrow data is not equal to what we're looking for. Move it down. Up next. Um, all right, what do you think about this so far? Any questions, any concerns? So let me ask you this, what is going to happen if the item we're looking for is not there? It's going to return false. That's what we want it, that's what we want it to do, right? Um, so that, go ahead. do you have to like um, set it to false and then just set it to true if you find it? Um, well, let's, let's, um, we could do that, but where um, are you passing bull from in the client code? Right. So what we're going to have to do, so, so what we could do is after this loop is done, we can, um, we can handle whether we're going to set found to true or whether we're going to set it to false. Um, but I want to back up a little bit and just talk about this loop. Um, you know, if we were to, let me just say, um, you know, return cur pointer arrow data. Um, so just, just putting off the discussion about the found variable for a second, let's talk about what we have right here now and, and, and what's the problem. Um, don't exit the while loop, right? Well, so if we, if the item is not found, I mean, if the item is not in the linked list, then what's going to happen here is um, that the condition is never going to be false, right? This is always going to be true until eventually we're going to run off the end of the list and that's going to give us a runtime error when we try to access Cur pointer arrow data, but cur pointers equal to null pointer. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So, how do we how do we handle how do we make it so that this function will still function okay when the item's not in the list? Just add a condition to the while loop that exits when it hits a null pointer. Okay, so we want to keep going as long as uh, we haven't found the data and cur pointer not equal to null pointer. Does that look better? So then, after we're done, we have to check and see what's going on, right? We, this while loop might have exited because we reached null pointer, or it might have exited because we found what we were looking for. So we're gonna have to have something like if, if uh, 
per pointer is not is not equal to null pointer. That means that uh, we found the the item we were looking for, right? So we're going to say found gets true and um, return cur pointer arrow data. That part makes sense? Yes. Okay. I have a quick question. Okay. If we're already breaking the one in one out uh, uh, style convention. Wouldn't it make more sense just to have there be a break within the while loop that also does something to the bool condition of the function? Um, okay, that's a good question. I, uh, the first part of your, the first thing you said was we're already breaking the style convention. Because if we have a return statement within an if condition, doesn't that break your style convention? The class? Uh, so um, that's a kind of a technical <laughs> question, but basically, the uh, no, it doesn't. Um, for two reasons. One is um, if a, it, it's in an if statement, not in a loop. Um, oh, so I think okay. the, style, the style convention you're talking about is referring to like loops, but also uh, the style convention you're referring to specifically excludes value returning functions anyway. So um, ah, fair enough. Sorry about that. Yeah. No, no, that's fine. Um, but I mean, you bring up an interesting issue. The strategy, the or I guess I should, the the approach I'm using here is, I'm going to have a while loop, and it's not going to do it's not going to do anything at all except just keep going until either it finds what we're looking for or it um, reaches the end of the list. And uh, there are other approaches where we would actually, you know, just return uh, um, from inside the loop if we find what we're looking for. Um, which would also be fine. And, and in fact, maybe we'll talk about that in a second, but um, let's go ahead with this approach for now and then we can maybe compare the two and see what we like. But um, okay. so, so this I think is correct for uh, if the item is in the list, um, we just need to add an else here, right? else will be if um, if curve pointer is equal to null pointer that means we never found what we were looking for so we're going to say found gets false and then uh, it's kind of an interesting question to th uh, to think about what we're going to return in this case right I mean we have to return something um, so the the typical uh, thing to do here even though uh, the the client isn't really going to care what gets returned. Um, it just uh, syntactically, we have to return something. So we're going to just return a default value type object. Um, you guys okay with this? I think we've done this before. That's I don't just, remember it. Okay. So basically what we're doing there is we are creating a value type object sort of on the fly, uh, sometimes called an anonymous object uh, because we never actually give it a name. But this is calling the default constructor for the value type. Um, Actually, uh, type. I take it back. I think in the first assignment that you gave us, we had an int like that. And I was right. wondering what that was. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. Right. That we had to convert. So, yes, I've used that before, but I didn't know what it was necessarily. Right. Right. Okay. So, uh, anyway, the, uh, that makes sense now what we're doing there. Yes. It's just, it's a, that's a, that's going to create a value type object called the, the default constructor for, for value type to initialize it and then, uh, return that object. So uh, how do we know what's actually going to be returned? Like where do we find that information? It's going to be empty, right? Um, what's actually going to be returned you mean um like so if if value type equals int which is what we have set it to then it's going to return the default value for an int which is going to be zero 
Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, yeah. If we, um, if we were to go back to our header file and say, oh, instead of int, let's use, uh, let's see, it would be right here. Instead of int, let's use string, right? Then what would be returned would be an empty string because that's the default value for um, objects of type string. Okay, that makes sense. I actually want to ask you a question about um, that statement when you have time. Um, okay, I would, I mean, I'm fine at, if you do it now. I just, I'm, I want to make sure I'm understanding right, like we're just redefining the type to another type. We're saying, well, now int is going to be value type. So instead of int, we're going to use value type, right? Yeah. So, yeah. So it's kind of, I mean, you could think of it as sort of a backwards assignment sta statement for types, right? We're just saying from now on, whenever you see the word value type, what we mean is int. Okay. Okay. Um, and it's the same for the one above it, right? Yep. Whenever you see size type, it we mean size size T. Yes. Okay. I thought size T and size type were um, interchangeable, but maybe that's because of the statement, actually. Exactly. Yeah, because of the statement. Um, so if you use a, a class from the STL, they are going to be interchangeable because... Uh, at least typically, I don't, I don't think it's, it's guaranteed to be that way, but typically in the standard template library classes, size type is defined just the way we have it here to be equal, the same thing as size underscore T. Um, but if you were just writing a, a standalone C++ program, you couldn't, you, you could use STD colon colon size underscore T, but you could not use size type. Okay. That's because size type would not be defined, right? right. As here Correct. we're saying size type is just size T and size yeah. T is the only known thing to Correct. STL. Okay. Yep. To C++. Right. Okay. Um, all right. So this is actually pretty close. We, there's one issue here that is pretty subtle. So, um, problem is, let's look at this while loop and think about what's going to happen if um, the item that we're looking for is not in the list. So um, let's say that cur pointer is pointing at the last node in the list. So I'm just going to kind of trace through this while loop to see what happens. Okay. So let's say we reach the top of the while loop and cur pointer is pointing at the last item in the list and it's not what we're looking for. So the condition is going to be true. So we set cur pointer equal to cur pointer arrow next. So now cur pointer is going to be equal to null pointer, right? Everyone with me on that? Yeah. Okay. So, so we need to we, change the order of cold part of the conditions, right? Because we don't want it checking the data for a null pointer. That's the exit. That's what forces it to exit, right? Exactly. So yeah. So the way the while loop is written now, we would go to the check the condition again. The first thing we do is check this condition. But since square pointer is null pointer, that's going to give us a runtime error. Well, wouldn't it check the thing on the right first, though? Uh, no, it goes left to right. Okay. Um, and so as a matter of fact, the way to fix that is to just reverse these, right? Because if we, um, put this first, oops, um, then when cur pointer is equal to null pointer and we get to the top of the loop, it checks this first condition and sees that this first condition is false. And since this is an and, we don't even have to check the second part of the condition. So it, so it, um, it just stops and the whole condition is false and the while loop stops. Make sense? 
Um, as long as nobody's saying no, I will assume that means yes. <laughs> um, so this has a name. I'm not sure if you, we've talked about this before, but um, the reason that we can do that is because of something called short circuit evaluation. Um, and this is, I don't know, this is a little bit of trivia, but something you should probably have seen at some point in your um, C++ training. Short circuit eval, did I spell that wrong? How do you spell circuit? Uh, anyway. Circuit is IR. Circuit what? Sorry, I, I think I spelled it wrong too. Okay. <laughs> um, no, never mind. It's it's C I R C U. Oh, C I R. Oh, okay. Jeez, that's kind of weird. I don't know how to spell circuit. Um. So right, not and um, not all languages do this, right? So some computer links and some programming languages may actually evaluate both sides of this expression, even if the left side of the um, logical expression is false, in which case we would have to figure out a different way to handle this, right? But because C++ uses short circuit evaluation, um, we can use this technique. Um, as far as I know, mo uh, every modern programming language that I know of uses short circuit evaluation, but um, at least historically, there are some that, uh, that don't. All right, so that was kind of a digression. Um, all right, so I think what we have here will work. Uh, oh, oh kind of spelled null pointer wrong. Actually, let me um, just do this. Okay, so now I'll just insert some numbers. Done. Enter a number to find. We'll say four. Found the four. If I say seven, not found. Okay. Um, All right, so I do want to um, just try a different approach for find um, where we actually uh, just exit out of the loop if we find what we're looking for. That's probably a, a, slightly, a slight improvement on this. Um, so it'll be worth, uh, worth looking at, I think. So um, I'm going to put that in there and then I'm going to comment this out. So we're going to do the same thing with setting up a curve pointer. Then our while loop is just going to say while curve pointer not equal to null pointer. So, you know, that implies that we're going to just keep going until we reach the end of the list. But we're going to say, if we find what we're looking for, then return it. So found a true and return it. Okay, and then if uh, we didn't find it, then we're just going to move curve pointer down to the next node. Okay, and so then if we reach the end of our while loop, that means that we never found what we were looking for. So we can just set found to false. And turn it. All right, um, stare at that for a second. Let me know if that makes sense or if you have any questions about it. Uh, well, I don't know, which one do you like better? That 
I like the second one. Yeah, the second one seems a little less redundant for some reason. Yeah. I agree. Seems a little cleaner. Um, all right. Uh, if there's no questions, let's go back and take a look at our client and see what's next. Okay, so it looks like the next thing we're going to do is we're going to be writing a delete function. Um, I had to call the function del instead of delete because, as we know, delete is actually an operator in C++. Okay, so this function is going to, um, it's going to be kind of similar to the find function. Uh, but instead of just returning, once it, once it finds the node that it's looking for, it's not going to return what it finds. It's just going to delete that node from the list. Um, so let's take a look at our header file. There's my del function. Oops, that's not what I meant. Okay. All right, so let's add a Dell function to our client, I mean, to our implementation. Okay, so um, this is going to be a little bit uh, complicated because if we just use the exact same technique that we used for find, then when we find the node we want to delete, we're going to end up with a pointer pointing at that node. And it turns out that that is not going to allow us to actually remove that node from the linked list. Um, let me, that's a, that's a pretty important sentence. Should I show up? Let me, let me, let me um, just pull up the lesson here because it actually has a diagram of a linked list and make sure that um, that's clear to everybody. Uh, so we need the pointer before the element that holds the data we're looking for, correct? Exactly, yes. So uh, what we're going to need is a pointer to the node right before the node that we want to delete. Because, um, so here, I just pulled this up simply because I want a picture of a linked list. <coughs> um, and so if we want to delete the 19 and all we have is a pointer pointing at the 19 node, that's not going to allow us to delete or to remove that node from the list because what we need to do and to remove a node from the list is we need to change the next pointer of the previous node so that it, so, so instead of pointing to the node we want to remove from the list, we make that next pointer point at the node after it. So in this case, that would be making the, the 47's next node point at the 62 node. Does that make sense that that would, that would be the, the technique for removing the 19 node from the list? I'll take that as a yes. <laughs> um, so we're gonna have to write our delete function so that we end up with a pointer pointing at the node before the node we want to delete. That's the bottom line of, of this discussion. So peak. Yes. Um, so 
So the way we're going to do that is we're going to have um, we're, we're, each time through the loop, we're not going to be looking at the, the current pointer. We're going to be looking at the pointer, the, the node after the current pointer to see if that's the one we want to delete. So um, I'm going to call the pointer prev pointer because uh, we want it to be pointing to the node, the previous node, not the node. And then I'm just going to say um, something similar to what we did in find in the first approach to find. But I'm not going to say while uh, while in, in the so if we look up here at the original version of find, we said while cur pointer is not equal to null pointer. Instead of that, we're going to say while prev pointer arrow next is not equal to null pointer because we're always looking at the next node, not not the current node. All right, does that condition make sense? This is basically the same as the original condition of the of the find well, of the find function, just that instead of looking at the current pointer, we're looking at the node, the next node in the list after prev pointer. So we have prev pointer arrow next here, prev pointer arrow next here. Um, so we're just going to move prep pointer forward one. So when we exit this loop, um, and, and for now, I'm just assuming that we find the item and then um, we, can, we can work on fixing it so that it works even if we don't find the item once we've got that done. So let's assume the item's in there somewhere. So when we finish this loop, what we have is we have a pointer to the node before the node we want to delete. So um, how would we remove the node from the list? Basically, we can do that in one statement looking at our picture. Uh, so right now, um, let's say that 19 is the node we want to delete and we have prev pointer pointing at the 47 node. So what we would want to say is prev pointer arrow next gets, we want to make a point at this node. So we'd say prev pointer arrow next Point, make prev pointer arrow next point to the same thing that this field is pointing at. This field would be prev pointer arrow next arrow next. Anyone need me to say that again? Or you can just, if you're watching the recording, you can just rewind it, right? But, um, we're assuming that, so just in my example, I'm saying we're trying to delete the 19. We're trying to remove the 19 node from the list. We've got prev pointer pointing at the 47 node because of our while loop. So what we want to say is prev pointer arrow next, this pointer right here, gets prev pointer arrow next, arrow next make prep pointer arrow next point to the same thing that prep pointer arrow next arrow next is pointing at. So that would look like prev pointer arrow next gets How's that look? Anybody need me to talk about that some more? 
No, it makes sense. Okay. Any, uh, any problems with this? Uh, they, I'll, I'll let you know the answer to that is yes, we still have some work to do here, but you know, this is, this is the basic thing that will work in the, in the general case. What do we need to still work on though? Do you need to make pre pointer arrow next arrow next null? Well, if we made prev pointer arrow next arrow next null, well, so prev pointer arrow. You've already, you've already copied its content. Right. So what we've done now, so that statement basically just, um, and here's where it'd be nice if I was actually drawing on a whiteboard, right? But what we did with that statement is we made this blue arrow here point at the 62 node. Right. So this node right here is basically just hanging out there. It's inaccessible. It doesn't bother us at all, right? It's not part of our list anymore. So it won't help anything to make the next um, data member point to null pointer. Um, the only issue we do have is that that's a memory leak. Right. You just need to deallocate. Well, do you use the the word delete, the keyword delete in this case, yeah. or no? Yes, that's exactly right. Uh, whenever we need, whenever we have memory on the heap that we've allocated using new, which we did in our insert function, there's a new. Um, so we've got this this uh, piece of memory on the heap that we allocated using the new operator. Um, so now that we're done with it, we're going to have to deallocate it using the delete operator. Um, just to be clear about that, that is not going to have, have anything to do with whether our program actually runs or not, um, unless we get to a point where we're running out of memory, right? Um, so that's the thing that's a little bit tricky about the delete, uh, about using delete. Uh, when you're developing your your code most of the time if you forget to delete something it's not going to be obvious uh, when you run your program your program will still work fine um, but you'll have a memory leak so here's what we need to do to fix the memory leak uh, by the way just another quick digression and this this is probably does not matter at all but just to be technically correct in C++, the new and delete, those are actually technically operators, just like plus and minus are operators. Um, so it's kind of weird, but um, you could actually overload the new operator if you wanted to and, uh, and have it do something different from what it does by default. Um, anyway, uh, so what we need to do is before we actually do this right because as soon as we do this that node the 19 node is inaccessible there's no way we can get to it so before we change this arrow we need to create a temporary pointer and point it at this node just so that after we change this pointer to point at the 62 then we can go back and deallocate this one so I'm just going to say um, pointer gets prev pointer arrow next. So that make so temp pointer is pointing at the 19 node. And then um, actually, I guess I did this. Now I can see both at the same time. <laughs> um, so uh, temp pointer is now pointing at this node that we want to deallocate. Uh, and then we change the pointer that's pointing from the 47 node. So it's now pointing at the 62 node. And then I'm just going to say delete uh, temp pointer. Okay, so that's good. Now we have uh, resolved the issue that um, we had a memory leak. 
Um, I also need to say found gets true. Okay. All right. So what we have here will work uh, in the general case, meaning that if the item is actually in the list, this will work correctly, except there's one situation where that's a special case and this won't work, even if the item is in the list. Anybody have an idea of what that might be? Is when it you only have one the element. First case? Um, I think you're both actually right. Um, somebody said if it's the if there's only one item in the list um that's actually true um but even if there are many items in the list this algorithm that we have here will fail if what if the first position is the element we're looking for. exactly right we never we actually just skipped over the first element we never looked at it we just started right here when we say prep pointer arrow next we just started by looking at the second node right so we're going to have to have a special case for if um, the first item in the list is the item that uh, we want to um, delete um, and then uh, there's actually another special case. So this is the hardest part about writing code that uh, that works on linked lists. Um, and that is making sure that you've gone through all the different possible special cases that can come up. Typically, the special cases that you want to go through in your mind when you're when you're working on something like this is uh, is the item we're talking about the first item in the list. Uh, do, let me rephrase that. Does our algorithm work if the if the item in question is the first item in the list? Does the algorithm work if there's only one item in the list? Does the algorithm work if the item is not found in the list? Does the algorithm work if the list is empty? Um, and so I'm just going to tell you in this case, it turns out we're going to have to have two more special cases. This is sort of, I would call this the general case. The two special cases we're going to have to look at are um, if the item we're looking for is the first item in the list, and also um, if the list is empty, is going to have to be a separate case. Because if we, um, if the first thing we do is check to see if the first item in the list is the item we're looking for, that's going to cause a problem if the list is empty, right? So I'm going to start off by just saying if list, if the list is empty. Okay. Then I'm going to say if the first item is the one we're looking for. And I'm just going to treat that as a completely separate case. Um, what would that, what would it, what do I need to do in that case? Let's look at here and let's say, okay, the number we want to delete is the 47. What am I going to do? Without worrying about memory at this point, without worrying about the memory leak, what's the basic thing we need to change? To delete the 47. List, what list is pointing to? Save, save 47 and the temp uh -huh. um, pointer, and then make list point to the second element in the list, and then delete 47. Right. Correct. Temp. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. So, so the basic idea is just make list point at the 19 instead of the 47. Um, that's the fundamental change we need to make list gets list arrow. Next. But as you mentioned that uh, if we just do that, then we have an 
uh, we have not deallocated that node with the 47. So in order to deallocate that node with the 47, we're going to say node star pointer list, move it over, and then delete. And also uh, found gets true. Um, okay, so that takes care of the situation where the first item is the item that we want to delete. And then this general case becomes the last uh, else. Okay, so we're getting closer. I think we're almost there. Um, just one more thing that we have not dealt with yet. Anybody, can, can anybody see what the thing we're still missing is? What if the list is, has, you know, many items in it, multiple items, but we don't find what we're looking for? Right, so this while loop goes and it goes all the way to the end of the list. And when we're done with this while loop, it turns out that prev pointer arrow next is equal to null pointer. That means we haven't found what we were looking for. So we're gonna have to uh, have an if statement here to check to see if that happened, right? So if prev pointer arrow next equals no pointer. False. False. Okay. That makes sense, everyone. Any any questions about that last step, or actually, any questions about anything with the delete function? All right, uh, let's just uh, give it a try. Um, ah. uh, so just to make sure this actually works. So I'm going to insert one, two, three, four, five, six. Six items, number to find. Uh, we already tested that, so I won't do that again. Number to delete. So let's see if it works correctly to delete the first item in the list. Let's see if it works correctly to delete the last item in the list. Uh, let's see if it works if uh, we put something that's not in the list. Um, then let's just delete everything else in the list. And then try to delete some more stuff. Looks like everything's working fine. Okay. All right. So I think that, I think that, um, that's good for today. Uh, if you have anybody have any questions about anything we went over or anything else you want to talk about? No, I think it's pretty good. Okay. Um, hope assignment um, four goes well. Um, be great if uh, if some folks can get a start on that and uh, maybe come back with uh, questions about it on Thursday. Um, otherwise on Thursday, um, we'll probably just do some more, add some more functions here to this class, just to give us some more practice with, uh, linked list manipulations, uh, cause it can be pretty tricky. Uh, but, um, yeah. All right. Uh, if there's no other questions, um, I guess I will see you on Thursday. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Dave. All right, see you guys Thursday. Let me see if I can figure out how to get out of here. <laughs>
<laughs> there we go. All right. See you guys Tuesday. Yeah.